oh, I wanted to use lie. The church is lying to you so badly, but technically I couldn't use that word because that would indicate they're doing it on purpose. And unfortunately, I don't. Well, no, no, let me remove unfortunately. Fortunately, they, they, I don't think they are purposely doing that. They're just grossly incompetent. We should sue them because they are turning this church generation away from the Olivet Discourse. You probably go to a church where they rarely, if ever, talk about the Olivet Discourse because they want you to believe that when Jesus talks about his coming in the Olivet Discourse, he's talking about the second coming, not the rapture of the church. Turning you away from a teaching that was so famous and so well received by the church that it was given a special name, the Olivet Discourse, much like the Sermon on the Mount. For centuries, the church looked to the Olivet Discourse as the prime teaching on prophecy. And we've turned away from it in these last days where his coming is imminent because something else that needs to happen is also imminent. And they don't tell you about that. Look, somebody is deceiving you. Either they're deceiving you or I'm going to deceive you. The great thing is there's a simple test. It all comes down to this sentence. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. What you think that means will determine which side you're going to be on. If you choose their definition of that and join them, then we know something about you. You're one of the five foolish virgins. I'm sorry. It's just true. If you can't see the truth of what I'm going to show you and how they are deceiving you, I, I don't know what it's going to take to wake you up. I'm sorry. I, it's time to be blunt. That's just the way it is. So let me tell you what they would say about that. If you were to go up to your pre-trib pastor and say, what does this mean? He will say, oh, that's the cosmos erupting or possibly falling apart. That's what they, they say because they're forced into that position. They can't tell you what I'm going to tell you for a, a very good reason. I'm going to show you what it really means. But if you want the truth, you're going to have to make a solitary decision to go get it yourself because they're not going to help you. They aren't going to help you. I can help you a little bit, but the decision will be yours ultimately, and you need to make it. You need to make it so that it's clear in your mind, so that you'll know what you believe. I'm going to show you that's crap what they're teaching you. And they have to teach that because the truth, if they taught you what I know is the truth, their prophecy, their eschatology falls apart. Jesus says that in the Olivet Discourse three times in all three versions of the Olivet Discourse. He says that. He makes that statement. In a couple of them, he adds this beforehand. The stars will fall from heaven, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And see, they would say, see, that's a, that's a meteor shower or something, you know. The, the, the cosmos is falling apart. It's the second coming. No, that's not what's going on here. It's something far deeper, far more important, far more unbelievable in nature that he could only compare it to the flood. At the sixth seal, we also see that stars fall to the earth from heaven. But we're told something special about them there. We are told it's like winter figs being cast to the ground when hit by a mighty wind. Winter figs? Why, is it, why does it say winter figs? I wondered that at the start of this year. Why does it say, or maybe it was the end of last year, why does it say winter figs? So I looked into fig trees and quickly saw that the winter figs are the worthless crop. They never ripen. They're no good. Can't do anything with them. Let them fall to the ground. The ones that show up in spring and ripen in summer, those are your figs. Those are your fig newtons. You will never buy a package of winter fig newtons because they'll be horrible. So why are the stars falling from heaven likened to worthless figs? Well, here's a clue. 
The very first teaching moment in the book of Revelation comes in chapter 1. John has witnessed the Lord walking among the lampstands, holding seven stars in his hand. The first thing he teaches John is this. The seven stars you saw in my right hand are angels. Is it starting to become clear to you? In the 12th chapter, we are told that the red dragon, the devil, Satan, he sweeps a third of the stars to him. Well, we know he did that with angels. Are we seeing that again, the stars being angels? Well, of course we are. Because right after that, we learn there is war in heaven. And Satan and his angels are being cast to earth. That is why the worthless fig crop is being figuratively described as that event. These are worthless angels being cast to earth. Now let's go back to the statement. He's telling us these worthless angels being cast to earth are part of what? War in heaven. He states it as for the powers, the authorities in heaven will be shaken. There is coming a regime change, an operational change in heaven. They are purging heaven of Satan and his angels. War in heaven. What happens right after war in heaven? Every single time. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then you will see the Son of Man coming with power and great glory. And I will send my angels out to gather my elect. That's what has to happen right before he appears. And then he sends his angels out to collect the church because we have reached the end of the church age. That's why Satan is being thrown out of heaven. He's taking his bride back to heaven, and he's not going to allow the accuser of the brethren to be there popping off about our past mistakes. He's not going to allow it. And so Satan is cast to earth. Why does the church hate that explanation so much? Because you can read in chapter 12, what happens after war in heaven? Satan isn't chained up. It's not the end. The Lord doesn't even touch ground at the coming that he talks about in the Olivet Discourse. Satan goes about his business. The earth is told, Oh, woe to you, earth, for Satan has been cast down to you, full of wrath, knowing he has but a little time. But he has enough time to bring forth the beast out of the sea and the false prophet and the system with 666 and ultimately Armageddon. It's nowhere near being the second coming. And they know that. They want you to believe it's the second coming. They want you to believe that the rapture happens before any seal is open. It's deception after deception after deception on their part. He is talking about an event so impactful that it can only be compared to the flood. In Luke's version, he doesn't technically say the stars fall to earth. He says it in a different way. He said people passing out, fainting in fear and foreboding as they see in the Greek, the ones coming on the earth. It's the same thing. He is telling you that's Satan and his angels being cast to earth, and it is so frightening that people are literally fainting with fear. That's what's coming. The Lord also tells us in the Olivet Discourse some signs, and he gives us one final instruction. But right now, you need to make a decision. What do you believe this means? Do you believe that is just cosmic randomness, chaos? Or do you believe that is war in heaven? If you believe that is war in heaven, you need to align yourself to the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Olivet Discourse because war in heaven is coming. How do I know? Because we saw the Revelation 12 sign in September of 2017. The Revelation 12 sign is pointing to war in heaven. That's what it is doing in the 12th chapter of Revelation and that's why we saw it in 2017. It is giving us time to prepare War in heaven is coming. You need to wake up. The church's teaching has put you to sleep. This, brothers and sisters, is war in heaven, and he expects us to get ready for it. It is important to him. After he tells us what is going to happen, he gives his parable after parable after parable. Don't let anybody take this from you. Don't let the world get in the way of believing it. 
What I say to you, I say to all. That's what he says in the Olivet Discourse. Are you all? He also says, take heed. Very important what he's saying. Listen carefully to what I'm about to say. That's what he's saying. See, I have told you all things. Trust him. Trust his teaching. Turn away from the church's nonsense on this particular issue and join him. I will show you in the next video why the first five seals are most definitely open. War in heaven is coming. Get ready for it.